All right, so welcome back to Forgotten Daily. So if you've been following along, you know that um, we've been working on this little GLH Omni for some time now. Um, this little car has just been one step forward, maybe two steps forward, and then 20 backwards. It just seems like every single thing just, you know, if, if it can go wrong, it goes wrong. So uh, as of today, making this video, we have two weeks to get this car on the road and heading to the Rust Belt Ramble, which begins in Detroit, Michigan. Um, that's a probably a three hour give or take drive um, from here to there and uh, the absolute latest we can leave I would like to leave uh, two weeks from today in the mid-afternoon uh, at one to try to get ahead of traffic or uh, late afternoon to try to get behind all the traffic try not to get stuck in you know Toledo or Detroit traffic either or um, last year we left um, about the same time frame and yeah we got a little bit of traffic but wasn't anything really heavy so with that being said I don't know if we're going to make it um, this this car a little backstory on it is sat in a garage similar to what I have um, for 23 years before we found it uh, it was a one owner car and the gentleman stopped driving it due to a transmission issue now with that being said, it was brought home to be a parts car uh, because, you know, it's definitely not pretty. Um, Ohio weight loss program has taken its toll on some parts. Um, you can see the door and the rear dog leg on the driver's side and I think the passenger side and naturally the floorboards uh, and whatnot. So anyways, um, my son said, hey, Dad, why don't we make that the 2023 Rust Belt Ramble car. So, me, you know, because he's my son, decided that, all right, let's do it. So, this car has gotten so many new parts put on it that it is insane. Uh, so, we brought it in the garage approximately March of this year, and it's been sitting here since. Uh, the engine that was in the car was froze up. So we had another donor engine out of an 87 LeBaron 2.2 uh, turbo, but unfortunately it did not have a turbo on it. So, but I did know it ran. I drove that car into the garage before I parted it out. So I knew I had a running engine. Uh, the transmission is the reason that it was parked originally. And the gentleman didn't know why he drug it home, towed it home, whatever, and put it in the garage and that's where it sat. He never looked at it again. So what I found was that the plastic cups on the end of the shift rods had popped off and come loose and were wore out and cracked, etc. So my hopes are that that is what the transmission issue was. Um, somewhere down the line in parting a car out, I, I bought or found inside of a car the adjustable, I call them hem joints, they might not be the right terminology. But anyways, an adjustable ends for the shift linkage. So now we eliminate all the plastic caps. So with that being said, uh, the car has, uh, and, and it was, this stuff was done because it was out and now's the time, not because it necessarily needed them. So it's got a new head gasket, uh, new oil pan gasket, new timing belt, new belts, all new fuel lines, uh, upper and lower hoses, heater hose, we bypassed the heater core. Uh, I replaced the heater core before I determined to just bypass it. So that was a waste of time and money and time and energy. Um, new master cylinder, brake lines to every wheel, um, rear wheel cylinders, brake shoes, brake hardware, wheel bearings, drums, everything on the rear is new except for the parking brake assemblies. And then the uh, front brakes, uh, the driver's side, as of making this video, has brand new pads and rotors. Um, the passenger side, we was out here trying to bleed the, bleed the brakes to, you know, to get fluid going through them. And a couple months ago, I had had the old calibers on the bench and broke the bleeders free and everything was fine. So needless to say, I get to the right front and it's so the bleeder. If I can get it to focus here, probably not. But anyways, the bleeder snapped right off in the socket. So, brand new caliber, just came today. 
that is now on so this side now has new pads new rotors um, new hoses and this side has a new caliper while doing all of this I decided that you know with my son being in the car with me I wanted to make sure I had good brakes that was the most important thing but again it comes back to it is out let's do it brand new axles both sides brand new clutch um, I'm trying to think of what I, what else brand new fuel tank because the one that was in it was just nasty and gross uh, brand new fuel sitting in it brand new fuel pump I put a fr on the frame pump on it um, these pumps are not uh, readily available you can get a higher output pump but I really didn't want that I just wanted something just to get it through so it has a fuel pump out of a 90s f-150 uh, v8 so if it's got enough to feed that it should feed this I may end up having to put an adjustable fuel pressure regulator on it I'm hoping not because we are definitely running out of, running out of time anyway oh so um, we swapped the engine uh, a buddy of mine from Michigan come down Hubert's projects check him out on YouTube he does some cool stuff so he came down and the three of us we we hashed down this car thrashed on this car we pulled an all-nighter almost um, got everything apart and then I don't know a week later so I got the engine put back in finally uh, oh yeah another all, all new motor mounts as well oh and then the uh, turbo lines um, shout out to turbos unleashed again on those because we would definitely appreciate the uh, those on coming in on them quickly anyway I uh, decided hey I want to hear this thing crank over at least at least I know I'll be step further hit the key and then get a clunk long story short took the timing belt back off dropped the oil pan back down and here uh, on the water pump you can't see it from here but there's a bolt that runs through and goes into the engine block on the water pump housing I don't know where I got this bolt from um, as, as any project there's pieces and parts um, scattered everywhere so anyways that bolt was about two inches too long and it was causing the crank to hit the bolt and stop so yay we found that out um, and again some of this is in other videos that I've made of this car so got it back together uh, and it wouldn't run wouldn't fire so another buddy of mine was over here and we was messing with it um, we changed the Hall effect uh, we changed um, the engine computer we changed the logic module we changed the coil I don't know which one of those created things to work but uh, after we did all that still wouldn't I had spark for like three cranks and then it went away so I went in here and I cleaned up the grounds really good and then I mounted properly the uh, computer and lo and behold the last time I tried it cranks over and fires up and runs so now moving forward from there I got all the transmission linkage hooked up and, and everything I need to adjust it yet I was decided okay let's put the exhaust on somehow during all of this process the flange gasket has disappeared so I had ordered a flange gasket for this car and this is the exhaust that it should have that come off of this car and this is the this is uh, the flange shoot sorry about that this is the flange gasket that it calls for and you can see it is not even close to fitting on there it is like way off so I went to my local uh, AutoZone and the lady there thank goodness bless her heart she tried her hardest she worked for like an hour running back and forth to the truck to try to find the correct uh, gasket of course they didn't have one that slid over so we found one that was fairly close I thought well I can use my burring wheel and you know clean it off or you know take off some of the inside and and beat it on there and nope that didn't work either so I'm back to as of right now not having an exhaust flange gasket um, that was another step you know backwards so I have an 85 Daytona uh, that I'm in the middle of parting uh, my son-in-law came over a couple nights ago and we spent I don't know how long and trying to get the exhaust flange gasket off without really cutting up the exhaust in case I needed to use the exhaust um, and we ended up unbolting the turbo from the manifold which if you've ever done that you know that's a task in itself but we accomplished that but now 
<laughs> I just don't have enough room to get underneath the car to completely give me enough access to cut the in front of the catalytic converter so we can slide it all out through the through the top here and that's bearing that we may not have to we may have to remove the intake or I may still have to pull the head anyways so we'll get to that um, my plans tomorrow afternoon come home from work early and work on that so steps forward a bunch of steps backwards um, we are making progress I wish I had another two months instead of two weeks because I just just running out of time um, so some little things that I'd done while I was waiting on parts to arrive uh, checked all the lights you know and make sure we have working lights and this this parking light wasn't working so I pulled it apart and the socket was all rotted away well, unfortunately I had a rampage here at the time so I was able to wire in a socket for that not a big deal um, the seats that was in the car were just nasty and just tore all up so we had seats from a Shelby charger put in they don't sit quite right um, I don't know why I, I, I don't care anymore they're in uh, I think the passenger side to me looks crooked. I don't know. Maybe I'll look at it if I get time. Um, we had the whole dash part to put a heater core in. That was a waste because, again, we um, eliminated the heater core. So, no need there. Console's been in and out two or three times. Shifter's been out a couple of times due to uh, working on the linkage. Another issue with there, somehow, the rod goes, there's a rod that goes through the bottom of the shifter. And then there's a C-clip that holds that together. And and um i was underneath there messing with it one night and ting there goes the c-clip somewhere in this garage so i had to go buy more well now it won't fit it's just a hair too short so i've got to figure out how to make that work um moving on to other things when we got the car this door panel was off and all the window parts inside of it were gone the window regulator and everything was gone and fortunately we had another omni I was able to steal it from that and the window goes up. It isn't perfect, but it does go up and down. Uh, the windshield was cracked in this car. We had a horizon here. And Hubert's project, my buddy from Michigan, he does windshields. So he was able to come down and help me get swap windshields for us. Taillights. So when I bought the car, I think the driver passenger side was cracked, um, busted up. So we bought. I found another taillight. It isn't perfect. But um, the, the corner that's missing is just basically reflective. There's no light showing through it, so that's a plus. The Omni taillights are held in with clips on the back side. They don't have bolts and nuts like your traditional taillight. They got little clips. I gotta find some for this taillight, hence the bungee cord. So we get everything working. I got a little, little surprise that I may or may not show yet, but uh, we get everything working and I wanted to take a picture, so my son was here, and he's. I said, hit the brakes. Um, I want to take a picture of, of what it looks like, and now the right side doesn't work. Again, 20 steps backwards. Fuel tank, um, we'll go to that. I ordered the fuel tank, and it wouldn't go in. I worked and worked and worked and worked for three nights trying to get this thing figured out, and I was literally... If I'd have had three more threads on the end of the bolt, it would have went on just fine. What I ended up doing was screwing up the threads, trying to force it, and so I cut it off, and drilled a hole through the floor, and ran a long bolt and some big washers and the fuel tanks in there. So with that, you can see the, the aggravation has been very immense on this car. Um, I have given up on it many times. And then um, <clears throat> I'm like, man, you got all this money and time and energy wrapped up in this car you got to at least get it running whether it makes it to the rally or not i think tomorrow night my son is supposed to come and uh we're supposed to work on it hopefully we can get the exhaust done hopefully we can get the brakes done um and hopefully we can get you know i'm gonna put water in the antifreeze for now instead of cooling it just to get it running uh to see how it works out everything works and if there's no leaks and everything works, then I'll drain that out and put antifreeze in it. But um, get the belts back on, make sure the fan works, etc. Um, and then I'm hoping that I can get my buddy over here and we're going to do a, a, a garage alignment on it. We're, um, well, he's, he's done it before and it works. I don't care if it isn't perfect. It's going to be close enough for me. Another thing I got brand new is brand new tires all the way around. These tires have absolutely zero miles on them. 
so that at least we shouldn't have to worry about any you know having a blowout uh i don't know what else has been going on with this car i don't know what else that is wrong or whatnot but uh um if you we're gonna try to put a vacuum uh block on it i got the block here and all that so i'm trying to eliminate the emission stuff because i know that you can get away with running like four vacuum lines i think it is i think one's for the map and I, a couple other things i can't remember now if you know what those four things are i would definitely appreciate it if you could let me know in the comments um i can't think of them off the top of my head but uh anyway this is the last probably update maybe i might do one more if we get it running uh on the omni we have some plans for it just for some minor decoration stuff if it all comes together uh, I've kind of quit worrying about that and focusing on just getting this darn thing on the road. So anyhow, with that, I appreciate you uh, tagging along on this journey. It has definitely been a journey. Um, like, follow, subscribe if you're into these little cars. Uh, as always, if there's a how-to you want, you want to see how to do it, uh, don't hesitate to ask. I'll do my best to get it done. Um, we do buy and part these cars out fairly often. Um, we sell on eBay, so a how-to video should be fairly simple since I normally have a couple of cars here um, anyways. So uh, Saturday, we're supposed to go pick up another 90 Daytona. Uh, I don't know anything about the car other than that. Just a base Daytona. So that, hell, you never know. That may be our rally car depending on what's going on with it. So anyway, thanks for watching and I uh, definitely hope you have a great day.